They say, why do you let your son do that? He's going to kill himself. It's given him meaning. It's his life. It's something he believes in. These moments on a bike when everything just comes together, you connect with the bike completely and just the track, everything flows. I mean, you could ride 10 to 40 laps and just hit the same mark every time. Because when it's on, it's on and it, it's the greatest feeling. Congratulations on your win. Um, you must be having a good day, huh? It's a pretty good day. Very good day. Um, and what are you doing? Just going to go party now or are you going to relax? I'm actually working Center of Gravity. I'm the official host. Oh. So I got some official duties to do, but definitely going to the after party. Cool, cool. Today is actually my birthday. Happy birthday. I just turned 27. Can I have a birthday kiss? <laughs> Hi, I'm Courtney Ann, and I'm ready to do Ryan's workout with I Don't Fit. There you go, Mr. Brown. Do this. Hello and welcome to the Washington Motorcycle Road Racing Association last round of the year. This is Marcel Ernie with ErnieRacing.com. Here is the pit. Today I'm racing the Redline uh, 03 R6. Never been on the bike. The shocks and springs are soft from a little kid being 120 pounds. So it is going to be very, very interesting. Never in the bike. And here we have a fellow Kelowna guy, John Friesen here. You got any words for the morning? Uh, what do you think about the day? Are you taking a shot of you or a shot of me? I'm filming you like, right I now. I want to be the star of the show right now. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Jonathan Friesen next to ErnieRacing.com. All right. And here we have Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, there he is. Andrew is a track day guy. Um, he's just here. To, what are you doing today? Uh, watching. Having fun. Watching. You're going to learn, you mean? Yes, learn. Lots of learning. Oh, yeah. He's learning about air pressures, um, learning about race fuel, yes. steering dampeners, tire big, warmers. Electronic tire issues. Warmers. Yeah, tire warmers. <laughs> Everything. All right. And on with the day here. And of course, I'm racing 600 Super Sport. And Open Super Sport on Aaron's uh, old 750 uh, Dino Tune by Nels uh, yeah. from Two Wheel Dino Works. What do you think about your first practice session? Good, Robert? good, good, good. Okay. Good, 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 good. Woo! Oh man, that's too obvious. <laughs> We're at the border. Nice. 75% chance we get through, I estimate. <laughs> What's that even mean? <laughs> it means like... Without asshole, you mean? Or? Without being pulled over, yeah. Oh, yeah. Attila said he watched my last vid and he's like, 
your voice went up at the board. I can tell you're nervous. <laughs> your voice changes. <laughs> oh yeah. Like, oh really? Yeah, yeah. So now it's changed. Good. You know what the trailer number is? Uh, the tag number. I could grab the insurance papers or yeah, jump man, up. Right up there with the Where are you guys going? We're going to uh, Portland International Raceway. What's going on down there? I am racing super bikes this weekend with the Oregon Road Racing Club. Oh yeah. Okay. What do we got? Plates for this one. Royal. It. The plate number is forty-five nineteen seven C. Okay. The back. You guys want to go back home when? Uh, Monday or Tuesday. Uh, no. Thank you. I'm gonna get this plugged in here. Aha, uh -huh, cut him off. <laughs> the car right there. Oh, did you? No, no, I just took my position. I didn't cut him off. It was a good pass. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back. Okay, 600 Super Sport riding this 03 R6. First time riding the bike. I did with zero practice. And right away it feels funky. Oh yeah, it's just bad. It's bad. <laughs> this is a horrible idea. <laughs> Suspension feels wrong. Oh, and there's Jonathan, or this Friesen. I don't know, is that Jonathan? Who's wearing those leathers? It's gotta be. Oh, that's the helmet, yeah. Got him on the pass. All right, there's the grass now. We're back on the 750. Forget about that, Skip. And, uh, let's rock out. Here we go. Oh, good start, obviously. Like always, always got good starts, except for on the BMW because of a launch issue. So in 2013, new motor, be able to solve all these problems. Go real fast. And scrape. Alright, so here's the leg dangle. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a big piece of weight, a big leg, and balancing it out there, and I just like to scrape it along the ground. And it just feels good and uh, controls the back end of the bike. It's, it's a lot of fun, it's a good stretch, and uh, you kinda, it's kind of like you're feeling the ground. And so if my front end locked up, maybe I could feel it better and save myself with my foot on the ground. <laughs> well, it became rain. I went out there in the dry AMA old tires and uh, they were very, very slick. As you can see, I was doing burnouts on the, the wet <laughs> in the center trying to accelerate. Rain tires time. Do you think I'll be racing the uh, rain bike or the dry bike? <laughs> I don't know. It's dry. It's dry. Switching the dry tires, last yeah. minute. Alright, this is 750 Super Sport riding uh, the stock motor. It's Aaron Holmberg, he's a novice racer at the time. And uh, ripping his novice bike. Was, I always start at the back because I don't do championships too often, except for in Canada. Um, I was doing sporadic races. So. Okay, you can see the ground is wet, it's dry, it's, oh, it's wet, it's dry, it's dirty. And there's Mark DeGrasse, which is on his, his 600 CDR. Those are nice bikes, too. And there's Ryan Sutton, who's uh, on an older R6, with bullet, his motor blew up again, another fuzzy motor, motor disaster again. And uh, so he had to pull his back out, <laughs> back up out. Alright, so now we're chasing down DeGrasse. This is like, yeah, you know, you're scraping your knee along, feel it's a little wet, go through the puddle. This is wheelies over the back, this is real tight to the left, straight line, braking a little bit, braking a little bit, off brakes, on gas, forward, okay, and then this one's full throttle, this is corner one, 176, yeah, and brake, 90%, 70%, 60, 50, zero brake, on the corner, get on the gas a little bit. Oh boy, it's hard to keep up with this bit. <laughs> so yeah, you don't actually break much in here. You just cut. Oh, god, this is scary. That's a scary corner. I never forget. I crashed there twice. Almost died practically. Brake failure just the last time in uh, 2011. First race. 
Okay, so DeGrasse, you know, he's the main guy, he's the champion now for 2013, and he's gonna rock the, I mean, for, he's gonna rock the number one plate for 2013. 1.12 is the championship for Washington Club. So, uh, racing coming up, it's gonna be pretty fun, they get the race against DeGrasse again, and boom, take them on the, the death shoe, they call it, in Seattle. That's because it transfers onto the front drag. Okay, oh yeah. Clemmer here, Kevin Clemmer, he's a great guy, great competitor. Look at that beautiful R6. Like, that thing's got some serious nice paint. Good paint scheme. This guy, he's a serious competitor. Um, but I, you know, he's, he's holding me back for a lap here, so he's in the way. Get out of the way, Clemmer. <laughs> okay, we're ripping down the straightaway into the death chute. Look, I got a great drive. Now I'm drafting him. Okay, I'm out of the draft, it's too dangerous. I just full throttle, just can't even do anything. Ah. Okay, it's inside and late on the brakes. Doom, doom. Done. Done. Now I'm leaned over, elbow down, pad the here. Now I got like a freaking last lap. One lap to go, and the leader, Eli Edwards, is on his, his R6 up there. I wish I had an R6 too. Those are great handling 600s. It'd be better than a 750 because they build the motors and they're awesome. Okay, and there's this scary corner, and I'm working on him, man. I'm working real hard, and like, I want this guy. Come on, one lap. Oh, yeah, I'm into the corner. I'm gaining tight now. This is a bumpy corner. You've got to feel the front end. You really feel it slip out and push. And then this is my favorite. Boom. Oh, I'm a little wide over the curving. <laughs> Wormer gave me a talking to a long time ago. Check out the greatest hits for that vid <laughs> from Phil. And uh, yeah, here's the finish line. There you go. That's the, you know, he was the number one plate in my mind before uh, the grass. Really fast in the 600 class. And that's it. The race never ends. A week after the last Grand Prix of the year in early November, the teams are out testing for next season. Lap after lap, knees on the ground in the corners, 200 miles an hour down the straights, looking for a little extra speed. They're crazy. They're going to kill themselves. Well, maybe. But what about the buzz? The babes? The money? How do they do it? Why do they do it? Week in, week out, riding and crashing and riding and winning, and always faster, and faster, and faster. At the beginning, when you tried the first time the 500, ah, uh, fuck. I used to think all road races were nuts. You know, racing around a track at that speed. Well, it, it's, it's just like a video game that has the element of danger. As a racer, you always have that in the back of your mind that you always wonder, you know, you know when's it going to happen? Because it will happen, you know, you will fall off. Speed uh, is something dangerous, but very exciting. The top speed is 314. Nearly 200 miles an hour. Yeah, and 200 miles an hour. It's yeah. good, yeah? <laughs> For the first approach, you will think this is a crazy sport. By the end of the day, it's not that crazy. Growing up as a kid, always thinking, you know, if I could ever just race motorcycles and make a living, that would be the coolest thing known to mankind. What do I like about GPs now? Oh, the crumpet, I suppose. Th this is a real war, these 16 races. That's your job, and that's what you do, and you have to win, or you, you know, you're out of your mind if you got second. You just wanted to kill everybody. The sensation you had before the green light is always the same. It's always uh, very, very strong. But if you want to be the world champion, this is the one you have to win. MotoGP, the fastest men on the fastest bikes in the world. This is 
the most important race of the weekend, the fastest bikes and the fastest guys. <sighs> I was fortunate enough to be leading it, but uh, I was taking it real soft in the corner one. No reason, to, no reason to make excessive risk. And then DeGrasse wants to pick up the corner speed, so here we go. Wow, it's really wet. I was like dirt biking out today, and it was super wet, just like this. Okay, nice. So I'm just hovering my foot on the ground. I'm feeling the traction. I'm feeling my speed, just like you feel your knee on the ground. For example. Yeah, he's got an awesome bike. I'm going to be uh, testing a uh, BM uh, CBR 1000 RR um, in uh, 20 days here. Less than that. Try and I can compare my BMW to the CBR directly back to back later on. Okay, so yeah, I'm just following the grass here in the rain. Um, sometimes it's smart just to pick a nice pace and follow. But uh, as you might have seen, follow the leader, it uh, can work out uh, in uh, negative with uh, getting red flagged and then the race ends and you're behind the guy. So anyways, I'm leading the way here, leg dangle, and uh, he's gonna rip by me on the skateboard. Boom, there he goes. The MotoGP season runs from April to November, 16 races in 8 months on 5 continents. The locations may change, but it's actually all one and the same place, a town that moves around the world populated by a couple of thousand highly skilled professionals in the grip of a shared obsession. We all are just junkies, speed junkies. This is the routine. Arrive Wednesday, set up Thursday, practice Friday and Saturday, race Sunday, pack up and move on. At the start of the season, there are 24 riders. At times, there will be fewer. Accidents happen. Most teams have two riders. Your teammate is not your ally. He's the first person you want to beat, the guy with the same equipment as you. The race is a sprint, no pit stops, every man for himself. Oh, lunchtime, midday at uh, Pacific, you know. Portland International, Zachariah White here, crew, helper, Kelowna, fellow Kelownian. Yeah, how's the day going for you? It's good. Yeah, it's enjoyable. Good. Nice weather. Had a few problems with the bike too. Yeah. We'll figure it out though, we'll manage. It happens. It happens. Hey guys, this is Marcel Ernie. Actually, it's April 6, 2013. I'm doing live broadcast for an old video for YouTube. So we got an important race coming up next. There's Ingo getting on his uh, Segway. My mom came out to visit me. That's her in the back. Okay, so we have Formula Ultra. Riding uh, my buddy Aaron Holmberg's old stalker. Great start here. Ooh, we got a, got the, uh, nice field in front of me, though. All quality, fast guys. All right, moving my weight um, onto the outside peg, about 50-50 on each peg. Using my left leg to hold onto the bike. Gonna come up here, 
Try to get inside of Anthony Machu, who is in front of me in fifth. Tony Parter on the R1. Kevin Pinkstaff. Sam Rodrigo and Alan Schmidt. Uh, Kevin's on the Kawasaki and the other guys are on the Suzuki's. Uh, you can see they just pulled away on the straightaway and like, damn it. And, uh, oh, there goes Tony Porter on his R1. So now I gotta follow him. He's kind of in the way. So now I'm looking uh, way ahead. But I'm also looking like, boom, come up as inside. Full throttle, way earlier. But then he pulls away with his power. Uh, I'm running 131 horsepower, tuned by Nels. Ooh, there goes Machu. Ugh, I wish I had one of those bikes. All right, pass him on the inside. Back on the back straight. Um, I'm feeling pretty comfortable here, and oh. Outbreak them, I'm confident. Yeah, done. I just have these guys on the brakes. Uh, I learned on an underpowered bike all my life, so I had to brake later and then carry more corner speed. And this is the effect later on. I, I really got those elements down. So I'm, I'm squeezing on the tank a little bit with my left leg, you know, just to hang on the bike, but uh, dragging my elbow right now and then switch over other leg on the tank and my ass is half off the seat just like the guy in front Anthony and uh, looks I'm going for an inside pass here easy no done so I'm taking a tight line apex get on the throttle smooth fast full throttle now for sure and uh, yeah, oh, last lap look at this thumbs up to the finish line no there's a new character he, he passed uh, Anthony Okay, next race is 750 Super Sport. So everyone's on 600s and 750s. Yeah, just uh, working my way through the line. We got Kevin. There's Sam. So you can see lots of people like their R6s. That's popular right now. Full mm. throttle, take it as tight as the wall for less distance travel. And uh, maybe we'll get him on the brakes. What do you think, people? Yes. Boom, done. Okay, moving up there, Sambury, Bergerico. He's like the Max Biaggi of the Oma Club. <laughs> and you could say I'm the bossy. Put on a Ducati or something. <laughs> not doing so well. <laughs> the bike's not... Oh, there's sixth gear. But it really, you can keep it in fifth. It's not geared perfectly. I like to take fast corner and be running a little wide, but then just stay on the throttle. Notice the lean angle of my bike almost never changes until like the end here. I'm making up time quick on Sam here. Sam likes to sit on his bike. He doesn't move his body around too much. Um, I'm obviously the opposite. I, I lean off elbow style, uh, MotoGP style, or, or maybe like the Marquez, Moto2 style. And there goes Sam with his power. Head 750, that's you know, it's a nice built motor, not stock. Big shout out to uh, Aaron Holmberg for letting me use his Jixer here. Much appreciated, bud. Gets me out there on the track at least. Oh yeah, drag race. Oh, on the brakes. No, it's side by side. Oh shit. Oh, he gave it to me. Straight, 6 gear, 182 miles per hour, 183. Last lap. Okay. This is where I gotta put down a good lap. Really wide. Get on the gas. Bring it back. Same knee angle though. A little tighter now. Leaner in. Straight the elbow. Cut over. Okay. Same thing as last time, guys. But is he gonna block the inside? Does he know I'm there? Does he know I'm there? Yes, he blocks. Outside now. Ah, this is bad for me. I'm in a bad position. Can't get a drive. 
But look, Sam makes a mistake. He can't make this walk over. He loses his, his drive. Okay, this is my one opportunity. Only opportunity. Whoa, double leg break. Oh shit, look how fast. Oh, just across the curbing. That was sketchy. That was a, that was a late break. Now, let's see if I can take that uh, huge risk I just made and hold off Sam to the line. Uh, oh, you bastard! It beats me by 0 0.01 of a second. Uh, yeah. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, it's the morning. The riders meet is done. All right, it looks like it's hopefully gonna stay wet. Certainly all for practice. And uh, it's time to jam on the Homeberg 750 Stalker. No power. <laughs> Has some crazy chassis issues, but I'm working through them. Let's hope for rain all day. Here's the tire from uh, yesterday. I managed sixth in Formula Ultra and 6th and 750 Super Sport. Tracks, just really high speed. It's really hard to stay competitive on this track when you're down power, but I should say it should be good. Oi, oh, pretty sore. Just uh, bailed in practice, big high side out of four. Just lost the rear end, just boom, threw me over the bike and landed in front of the bike and looked behind me to make sure it wasn't gonna slide into me. And uh, we should be able to get out there again for a race this Formula Ultra. I think it's gonna stay wet. I'm not sure, we're still an hour away. With the rain's running. And uh, yeah, you excited for the, the race there, Zach? Yes, always. Yeah. Got a GoPros. And when I'm running my helmet again, right here. When the bike is working well, the bike is doing what you want, and you go fast, and you don't think on the bike. It's just one. Your wheels are your legs. It's a good connection. It's really a nice feeling. There's, there's no words that you can explain for the acceleration. No, I need more power. It just blows your mind when you hear the rider say, no, my bike's slow, and you know how fast they are, and yeah, they do complain because they get used to the power. If you know, my mother is my manager, but I never see the race. When is, the race is finished, I phone home and say, okay, mom, I finished, sir, four, five, okay, I see the race. All the time my mother say, okay, Loris, uh, go easy, go easy, go slowly, but uh, for my job it's difficult to go slowly, it's better to go more fast all the time. I have a son racing in the, motor <laughs> in the motorcycle GP that is named Valentino Rossi. And uh, I am a big fan of motorcycle and a big fan of Valentino. Oh, my mother uh, was not very happy because uh, she won't uh, I study and uh, blah, blah, blah. And now come to see the races and uh, yes, I have a little bit of fear like all the mothers. My mother too, see, <laughs> motorcycle is crazy. A lot of fun when you get it right, but the other side of the coin isn't that great. I touched a wide line that was very, very greasy. It was almost like ice. I'm full acceleration, probably about 135 mile an hour, and the bike just threw me off and straight into a sand trap and then into a wall. I broke my leg into around 17 pieces, and my foot, my hand, my arm, my shoulders, my ribs. It's madness. I can't think of it any other way. To, to enjoy riding a motorcycle fast, to develop your skills, and to exploit them in competition is one thing, but then to do it at this level, this absolutely fearsome pitch, weekend after weekend, against other people who are quite as mad and quite as good as you, that's what, what I find fascinating and frightening and admirable about, about racing. The thing about motorcycle racing is you can see a man at work. If a guy nearly goes over the handlebars at 120 miles an hour, his body language tells you what just happened. You can absolutely tell what's going on just from the shapes these guys make. It's at 100 and 
say, uh, 60 mile an hour or 260 kilometers an hour, the bike really doesn't want to change directions. It just wants to keep going straight. You don't just turn the, the handlebars. You've actually got to physically steer it with your feet and your body to actually make it change direction. Doing the car racing that I've done, you know, always felt like, a, man, if I could just move around in this seat a little bit, maybe I could change the handling of the car. But, you know, it's a 3,000 pound car and you're not going to affect the handling of it very much. Whereas a Grand Prix motorcycle sliding your butt back two inches in the seat, uh, you know, affects the nose weight to the rear end weight a ton on a motorcycle. The biggest difference comes from the rider. If they're in a good mood and happy with the setup of the bike, they make a great difference to the actual lap time compared to what we can do with adjustments. I think 90% of motorcycle racing is between the ears. Uh, Biaggi is a good rider. You know, on his day, because he's really good. But it's just a matter of finding his day. I could be wrong, but I just don't think he has what Rossi has. He's quick, but he's not quick everywhere. And when the bike has a problem, he, a lot of the times he can't ride around that. In the smaller categories, he was brilliant. He's a very, very complex character. He's a very interesting man. I think he's definitely a product of the press PR machine that his team and sponsors generate, and perhaps he's believed it a bit. It's common knowledge that uh, both uh, Max and Valentina are completely different uh, types of people, regardless of what sport they are involved in. They're, they're probably never going to uh, ever be friends. As far as Rossi's concerned, it's been going on for a long time. I think it's really Biaggi who drives the road, and Rossi plays with it. Rossi exploits it. Rossi's uh, quite clever in that way. This young Valentino Rossi's come along, who's more of a character. There's definitely a couple of very clever people behind him. He stopped out on the track after winning the 250 race and dived into the toilet and come back out 30 seconds later. Everyone was cacking themselves laughing. Max at one stage was rumoured to be dating Naomi Campbell and I think it had something to do with that, I'm not really sure. The Italian guys could probably tell you, they just have a chuckle and don't say a lot. Let me think, now at the time there, there were reports linking Biaggi with Naomi Campbell I seem to recall. Typically shallow celeb stuff which one suspected was probably serving the interests of each of their careers more than any personal and uh, Rossi picked up on this, or his fan club did, and when he won a race, they got an inflatable doll and dressed him in a rugby jersey, as I remember, but, but with the name Claudia Schiffer on the back, and he went around with Claudia Schiffer on the back. So. I think the story is very, is very easy about me and Max. Uh, we, we, we don't like <laughs> We are, I think it's normal, no? Uh, have, have somebody you don't like. Uh, and one, one for me is Biaggi, and one for Biaggi is uh, Rossi, so it's okay. I think we fight uh, for, the same, for the same target. Yeah, I wouldn't say, he just enjoys riding the bike, doesn't right. he? He just comes across as somebody who's trying to enjoy himself. You never ever hear any stories of him complaining about things, or? Nah. He's just there to enjoy himself and do the best job he can, and he does do a very good job of it, doesn't he? Oh, I mean, he's the best out there, isn't he, at the moment? God, yeah. <laughs> The bike reacts to your body position. We tuck down under the bubble, staying as low as possible, less wind resistance, pushing down on the pegs, real hard braking. A long sweeping left-hander, working your way on the throttle, getting on it harder and harder. You gotta move real fast, pushing down with your legs, switch back over to the right, hang off pretty far to the right, using your body. You gotta get over the front of the bike to keep the front wheel down. You're braking from 180 miles an hour to sometimes 40 miles an hour in the space of 100 meters. There's a lot of weight on the shoulders and arms. It tracks e-brakes thousand times, thousand times. 
pretty much everybody now has a trainer that follows them, pushes them through the gym. They're athletes. Back in the late 70s, with Barry Sheen and the young Kenny Roberts idea of a night before a race, probably involved a nightclub, large amounts of alcohol, beers, cigarettes, and getting home in a, in a crashed hire car at about three in the morning. Kenny, who now makes his riders, you know, eat pasta, drink orange juice, and go to bed early, they treat their diet, their training the same as other absolute top-level athletes. Legs are a big part. I mean, got to drive straight from a hairpin, get the thing hung out on your knee, and then from there, just carry it. They use their knees a lot more now. Like Valentino as an example, you know, he'll get through a set of knee sliders in half a day sort of thing. Kenny Roberts era, that's when you really started to see the body play more of an active role in what the motorcycle's doing. Before that, it was sitting on top of the motorcycle and bending it in and, you know, you don't dare move on the thing.
Coquitlam, May. From where? Coquitlam. Coquitlam? Oh yeah. And what are you doing in Kelowna? Already know. Yeah. So now gravity? Yeah. Having a hand have, have you been here before? Yeah. Okay. So you know what it's about then. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, Kelowna's the best city, honestly. What's the best thing about center of gravity? All the concerts, everyone's hammered, girls. Vanessa. Pardon me? Vanessa? <laughs> Mashad. Mashad? Yeah, Mashad. Mashad and Vanessa. Oh, Hello, hello. And, uh, what's your best moment at the center of gravity yesterday? Yesterday. <laughs> Getting get kicked out by the cops. <laughs> they kicked you out? We're on another level. We're on another level, they just kicked us out. Oh, okay. You ready, sir? I'm ready. Yeah. So this guy's gonna get a street bike now. Got a lot of experience from dirt track racing. When it's going sideways like that, you you have to have something planted on the ground to keep your weight in the same position. I raced indoor races on concrete, and I used to put super tape on the bottom of your shoe so the, the shoe would actually slide on the concrete so you could keep it underneath you. But when I started dragging my knees, you couldn't drag it with the leather because the leather would catch and, and jerk your foot off the foot peg. And I started putting super tape on my knees and it's just like, wait a minute, what are you doing? What are you, what, what, what are you doing? I mean, no one did it. No one thought about it, no one did it. Would have been somewhere around 72. In 1973, I started riding oh, 750. Ow. My brother-in-law, Paul Smart, is very good on a big bike. And I said to Paul, you know, this thing, as soon as I get it over sideways, it sort of drags on the ground. So he said, well, hang off it more. Just, just rode and let my knee hang out, and then sometimes it would touch on the ground. Your knee's on the ground. Obviously, you can adjust your weight with the knee. You know exactly where the motorcycle's at because you're controlling the back wheel with a throttle and lean angle. And I like to steer the bike with the back wheel, and I could do it on some racetracks and do it fairly proficiently. The rear wheel steering thing didn't really happen until Kenny had retired from racing. You know, the rear wheel steering thing started when the radial tires came in. Barry steered the motorcycle with the front wheel and I steered it with the back wheel. So it's it's two different theories of riding. Yeah, you used to you know, slide the bike, the bike used to step out and that. Yes, that happens to everybody. I don't think he really understood it because he never really got there with it. He was two-time world champion, as I said. So who's gonna show him anything different? It's not like some Yank's gonna come over here and say, oh, this is the way you need to ride. It started when the horsepower exceeded the abilities of the tires and the riders had to find other ways of continuing to race fast, especially over a long race distance. It required a different kind of skill, which favored all the American dirt trackers. That gave rise to the whole era of American champions because they were schooled in that art of being able to ride the motorcycle when it didn't grip the, the road anymore. When every time you opened the throttle, the back wheel would spin instead of driving it forward, and you had to slide it to go around the corner. And that receded a bit with the improvement in tires, but it still holds good, I think, you know, especially towards the end of a race. That's when you see the good guys really show up, is when things are getting tough and the bikes have developed problems and they've got to ride around the problem.
Eyes open now, stupid fuck. Woo! Air warmer off, yeah. Holy shit. Tire rod five seconds ago. Best to roll it out. Brakes are tight. I gotta be 30 seconds. I don't have no time for anything. Is my helmet camera on? Coming out. Is my helmet camera on? Yeah. I don't have a glove on.
much anymore. It doesn't work. When we had to restart the race, I'm like, I couldn't do it. I'm like, I gotta put it in neutral and jab it in gear, right to go. Really? Yeah. Hello, my friend. You were able to keep them warm? Yeah. What? So you were able to keep them warmish? <laughs> no. It was a disaster on the rear anyways. Maybe the front, I never had too much. Oh, it's just, you gotta go so slow. It's, it was like Mario Brothers. Do -do 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 -do. I don't know what I got, but that was a tough little rain race with the dry tires on. Well, uh, my day is over right now. Open Superbike is on the track. Uh, I wish I was out there. However, the clutch is gone on this bike. Uh, it needs new clutch plates. The last race, as you'll see in the GoPro video, just slippity sloppity slip everywhere. Fourth gear had the most hold, preventive slip. Fifth was ridiculous. Third's no good. Didn't even try sixth. Um, and I don't know, I got Verderico in the last lap in the last corner, which is so much fun, even though I don't know what position we're battling for. Uh, well, yeah, one little low side this year, and, you know, let's drift her up just a little bit. And, uh, borrowed a rear set, and it's good to go. But, uh, in practice, my first practice this year, it crashed. And I high-sided and landed on my ass. Kind of hurt.